everybody. Happy Mother's Day to the mothers and the spiritual mothers. Okay, can we take our seats so we worship God with our whole hearts? Start praying. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for today, Lord God. Thank you, God, that each and every one of us can come t- together to worship you in unison as a collective, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for hearts, Lord God, to be postured to you. We pray, Lord God, that there'll be a fire in this place tonight. We pray, Lord God, that each and every one of us will be the kindling that comes together to make an illuminating fire for your glory, Lord Jesus. Fire fall on this place today, Lord God, as we worship and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Who you are, you are. 
Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you sing it again. Thank you. I'm caught up in your presence and I just want Caught up in this holy moment, I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings, no. Oh, Jesus, you don't owe me anything more.
you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we just want you, Lord. We just want you, Lord, and uh, thank you, Lord. This flag, last flag here symbolizes uh, royalty of Jesus. We all know that. Purple, it's a royal color. Thank you, Lord. And we just want you, Lord. We want your, your royalty, your royal blood flowing through us, Lord. And uh, um, this flag is this is a flag Jesus wants for us this is a flag of surrender that's all we're going to do surrender to his will praise you Lord thank you Lord the more we surrender the more we'll feel his presence praise you Lord and if you're here today you've You've surrendered. We've all surrendered at, at, up to some point. Otherwise, you'd be somewhere else here. That you, you wouldn't be here. So well done. Well done. Faithful. The faithful here today. Thank you, Lord. You've surrendered that part of your life that sees a, sees a great day and thinks, why would I want to be in a building when I could be somewhere else, but uh, when we know our Lord, when we know the royalty of Him, we know we know how much He means, how much how much love He has for us, how much compassion, how much grace He has for us. We, there's no there's no other place we want to be. And as the song said, nothing else but nothing else but You, Lord. We don't want to be down the beach. We don't want we don't want to be um, football game. We, when it's time for You, Lord, we want to be with You, Lord. We want to be with You, Lord. Let, and I just pray, Lord, that in our lives we can just, just we just keep surrendering. Just we just, you help us, Lord, to uh, surrender these parts of our lives. And uh, and I just uh, don't, I just feel like the Lord's so compassionate. He, he's just saying, like, don't be in a hurry. Just just let me take the stuff. Just just surrender to me. And and the things that you think will never leave, you ne- you can never. You can never uh, overcome. Don't try and overcome them. I'll, I'll overcome them. Just keep coming. Just keep turning up. And, uh, and you one day you'll wake up and you think, where did that go? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just do it in your power, Lord. Let's uh, leave our, our flesh out of it and just live by the Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your Spirit, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Um, yeah, so you can take your seats and um, thanks, everybody, for your contrib- contribution. It was well felt by our Lord, I'm sure. Thank you, Lord. And um, now we're going to... Um, call Carmel up to, uh, she's got a, a Mother's Day presentation, Carmel's been in here working a little fingers to the bones yesterday, <laughs> and uh, here you go Carmel. Oh my gosh, look at these gorgeous mothers, happy Mother's Day all of you, we have four generations of mothers here sitting in front of us, it's amazing. 
Okay, so I was asking God about mothers and he reminded me of a time when I was at a park with my daughter and her daughter, my granddaughter. And uh, my granddaughter, who is three, was feeding the ducks and they were fighting for the food and uh, my daughter turned around and said to her, that about sums up motherhood. Tell them to stop fighting and you feed them. Seriously, ladies, though, I know you do much, much more than feed your children and tell them to stop fighting. It's a hard job and it's not for the faint-hearted. So enough from me. I'd like to call some ladies up to help me thank you, mothers, for all you do. And these young women will soon be mothers themselves. So we thank you for all um, being a role model for them and showing them what mother's love looks like. So if Zoe... Joanna, Sophia, Charissa, and Ava could all come up. Yeah, come up, Ava. So we're going to call on Zoe first. Cool. What up? Okay, Zoe, I've asked you to read something for yep. your mum. So it's Proverbs 31, 10 to 12. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Thank you, Mum, for helping me grow. So <laughs> tell me, Zoe, your mum is amazing. So what's your favourite thing about her? Um, she's selfless. She puts everyone before herself. She's caring, loving. Oh, and she models what it's like to follow Jesus with all her heart wow. and to worship him with everything she has. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Sophia. Okay. So Proverbs 31, 13 to 15. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's like the merchant ships bringing food from afar. She gets out while it's still night and she provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Thank you, Mum, for helping me grow. I know your mum and she is all those things, yeah. eh? <laughs> yeah. So what is your favourite thing to do with your mum? My favourite thing to do with my mum is probably go on bike rides and walks with her. Wow. Uh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Next we have Charissa. Okay. Proverbs 31, 20 to tw 21. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. Thank you, Mum, for helping me grow. <laughs> I love that bit where it says all of them are clothed in scarlet. <laughs> so what's your favourite thing that your mum does for you? My favourite thing my mum does for me is taking care of me 24-7. Yeah, <laughs> okay, Ava, your turn. Proverbs, verse 31, sorry, Proverbs 31, verse 25 to 27. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Thank you, Mum, for helping me go. Oh. Good job, Ava. Good job, Ava. So, Ava, what's your favourite thing that your mum cooks for you? I made pizza. Pizza? <laughs> Doesn't your dad cook pizza too, but your mum's more favourite, hey? Is that what it is? What do you like to do with your mum? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, last but not least, Joanna. Proverbs 31, 28 to 31. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honour her for all, all that her hands have done. Thank you, mum, for helping me grow. So this doesn't 
just apply for the mothers who are the girls here, for the mothers here, but it's also for all those other mothers here as well too. So Joanna, what's your favourite thing that your mum does for you? Um, oh, sorry, your favourite thing is, what is, <laughs> what is it that your mum does that you love the most? Um, how she worships God with all her heart. Yeah, and yeah, she's my greatest role model. <laughs> wow. So ladies, spiritual mothers, natural mothers, you're all so amazing and God has equipped you with everything that you have needed and he will never see you go without. You've laid your lives down for your children and we are so grateful for your sacrifices. Your children are your gardens, they are your harvest, they depend on you to help weed them and to feed them. So tell them to stop fighting and feed them. <laughs> a farmer plants his crops during the winter so that he will reap a harvest in the spring. It may take time, a lot of time, but you will reap a harvest. So enjoy that time. Your tears have not gone unnoticed, mothers, and God hears all your prayers. Amen. Especially your prayers, mothers. So we celebrate the bigness of God in your lives and we can't hold on to anything much in this world. But mothers, hold on to him. If you have a life that is founded on his love, then you are giving your children a life founded on that love. So we bless you, mothers, and we thank you for your tireless work. Thank you all very much. So... If we could have all those mothers, all those amazing women stand up, please. The girls would love to hand out some things for you. Just put the trays on there. That'd be better, sorry. Okay. Thank you. We just want to thank you all and ask God to give you the strength that you need to be mothers and do the things that you have to do. Thank you all. Well, that was all very good. Good on you, Carmel. Thanks very much for that. Oh. Very good. Yeah, powered by God. 
nothing, it wasn't, it's not an effort for Carmel. If you ask Carmel, she said, no, no, it's no effort. Because she's, by the grace of God, and that's how, how we know, you know, if you're doing something in God, it's, it's usually without effort. It's, um, it's just a joy to do if it's something he's assigned you to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I would ask Kerry to come up. Kerry's going to be preaching for us today. Good morning, Kerry. Good morning, Philip. May God bless you. <laughs> Kerry's been away um, uh, for a few days. I've had to try and wash up things and feed myself. <laughs> it's, get, it's getting thinner. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I said I think they were plants. Were they plants that were brought out today? Plants. Yeah. I think, hey, that was great. Yeah. I was going to say something else, but I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> well, let's, I'll just get on with it. <laughs> anyway, we we'll lift Kerry up. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Kerry, Lord. We lift her up to you. We just ask you to bless her, Lord. Just uh, anoint the lips, which we know you have, and um, and everything. As she's, as she's been digging through the scriptures, Lord, she's found, found good food for us, uh, good spiritual food that'll um, see us doing well, see us, see, uh, see us, I uh, just pray, Lord, that um, we get revelation knowledge out of uh, the words that Kerry's going to speak, Lord, as I was saying before, the, the revelation knowledge, the knowledge that we can have... Uh, Word knowledge, revelation knowledge is knowledge that nobody can ever take away from us, Lord. And that's what we want to get here today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Kerry. Amen. Thanks, honey. Um, yeah, I came home. He'd made the bed. He'd put washing away. And he even bought me flowers. I tell you what, I said to him, I'm going away more often. <laughs> All jokes aside, happy Mother's Day to all the mums out there. And I'm not just talking about natural mums, I also talk about spiritual mums. But um, I don't know about you guys, but when I think of Mother's Day, sometimes I think about, you get a vision in your head of mums with all the little kids and all the rest of it. But there's a group of mums that we're not forgotten, but we're looked at differently. And I would like all the mothers of adult children to stand if you can. That's you, Maria. You've got adult kids. <laughs> this group of mums, Alicia. <laughs> you, have, you have adult children, so stand. This group of mums have sown in tears wiped noses, wiped bottoms, and all the rest of it. And now their children have flown the coop, as we say. But you know, speaking as a, child, as a mum with adult children, those, those fears, that worry, that concern, that never goes. And as, adult, with, as mums with adult children, you can't go and change a nappy. You can't go and do those things because your kids have to grow and they have to learn from their own mistakes. So mums, I just want to encourage you to keep pressing into God. Know that God holds your children no matter how old they are. Whether they're, I'm talking about adults, so whether they're 18 or 56 or 46, my 46-year-old daughter, my 43-year-old daughter, my 40-year-old son, he holds them all. All we are called to do is to continue to love our children unconditionally and to keep our eyes on him and him alone, and everything else will be taken care of. So mums, particularly you group, because I can relate to you, happy Mother's Day. Enjoy the blessings that
that God has for you. Enjoy the blessings of your children. And if you've got them with adult kids, the grandchildren, and enjoy your day. Sit back. And I want to say to you mums, particularly, well done, mum. Thank you. So that just came on me very strong when we were worshipping and I just really felt like we're singing that, you know, there's no other place I'd, I want to be. I want to be at your feet. And I, and I felt my heart is I just want my kids to be in my presence. I don't want them to turn up with a hand out. I just want them to be there. Just like God just wants us to be there. So why are we with God? Why, why do we worship him? Why is it that we turn up? We turn up because he's going to give us something or we turn up because of him. Just um, to let the guys know up the back, um, I don't know if I'm going to get to any of my slides. Um, I really feel like God has, he took me away for days. I've made some amazing notes if ever you want to read them. I don't know if I'm going to get to any of them because I want to honour what it is that he wants to do here today. But I also want to honour and respect the, the mums that are here today and that have things to do as well. So I'm just mindful of that. So pray with me to hear God clearly and to go the way he wants it to go. Um, so we'll be... I prepared part two of my His Church, His Way um, little mini-series. And just as we've been worshipping, I've realised that the different aspects of the church are really what a mother is. This week I was going to talk about how the church is disciple makers. Guess what, mums? We're disciple makers. What Zoe and Joanna said about their mum... We're role models. They're following what we do. They look and how we live. <laughs> very, very scary. But like you said before, not scary. It shouldn't be scary that we run away from God, but scary that we run towards God. In that reverential fear of saying, Lord, I don't know what to do, but you do. So mums, you're disciple makers. Show your children how to love. Show your children how to walk in peace. Show your children how to forgive. Show your children how to have joy. Show your children how to live through trauma. You know, one of the things that... Um, As I was preparing, one of the things I sort of thought of was that um, if someone comes to me and says, oh, Kerry, you know, can you give me some advice? Don't look at, my, at me and, and look for me. The first thing I should be doing is pointing you this way and here. Because I'm going to tell you now, you don't know, you don't want what I've got. For 37 years, I lived my life the way I thought I should. And let me tell you, it did me little good at all, so you certainly don't want that. Mums, when your kids come to you for advice, point them here and point them here. You can share from here, but always point this way and here. And if we've got mums here today that don't know Jesus, just go somewhere and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Because I've done motherhood without God. And I've done motherhood with God. They're very similar. The difference is over here. I have a source of power that I can rely on, a source of peace that I can walk in, and a source of love that I can always call on. And over here, I have me. <laughs> I'm not that bad, but without the source of power, love, peace and joy, 
I yelled a lot. I screamed a lot. I heard my mother come out of my mouth and not in a good way. But over here, I've learned that it's not about me. Motherhood is not about you. Believe it or not, motherhood's about him. It's about living him out in your life so that one day your children will say she's my role model. What do you love about your mum? Oh, my God. What Joanna is, I love how she worships God. That's a testimony, Maria. That's a testimony. And as your spiritual daughter, I love how you worship God. <sighs> Another part of the body of Christ is that we're called to pray, a house of prayer of all nations, and we're here to worship God. We're devotees to God. Mothers, be devotees to God. Pray without ceasing for your kids. But don't pray to change them. Oh, dear Lord, give little... I'm trying to think of a name of a person that's not in the church. Give, we'll say Harry, only because of Prince Harry, so he's a bit wayward at the moment. But dear Lord, give Harry, give Harry the revelation that I'm, a, I'm, an, uh, I'm an amazing mum. No, no, no. Dear Lord... I thank you, Lord. Reveal yourself to Harry. Let him see the strength that you can give him. Dear Lord, just protect him. Guide him on your path. Don't pray your own selfish ideas and been there, done that, for your children. Pray his will for your children. That is an amazing privilege and an awesome responsibility as a mum. To pray for God's will, not your will, for your children's lives. Because God's will may not necessarily be what you want. God's will might be that that child moves overseas for his kingdom and his glory. Rather than the ten minutes down the road where they're living now. And as mums... We need to be prepared for that. We need to be prepared that no matter what God's will is, we're okay with it. And you know what? Apron strings are meant to be cut, not extended to overseas. Be dev devotees to God. When you are with God, why are you there? Are you there to get your will your way or are you there to get his will his way? God owes us nothing. He owes us Zippo. He's already given us life, but he owes us nothing. All the blessings... And promises in this Bible really are not owed to us. They are given to us because of his love, his grace and his mercy and nothing else. So if you're going to God for blessings, you're going to him for the wrong reasons because the blessings are already yours. Go to God because of who he is. As... The church should be devotees to God. So should we. So as the body of Christ, we, dev we devote ourselves to him. We worship him. But as individuals, are we doing that? Uh, are we going to him because we know him? In other words, so do we actually know him or are we going to get something from him? Mums, go because you, know, because you want to know him more. Because the more you know Jesus, the more that you have a revelation of who God is and what he's done for you and what he's done in your life, the greater 
mum, especially as your kids grow, you will be. The next thing I had for the church was dispensary of God, which basically means healing. That the church of God today is a healing center for a hurt and lost world. Mums, guess what? You're the pharmacist. You dispense God's love, God's peace. God's comfort, God's joy, every time your children need it. You know, like, um, yeah. Is sickness from God? No. Are diseases from God? No. They're a result of the fall, which I'm not going to get into. It's too bigger deal but basically they're a result of the fall they're a result of what happened in the garden and part of all of that they're the consequences of mankind's actions so the enemy now can use disease for two reasons he will use disease to take you out permanently from the body of Christ that's okay you'll go to heaven win-win but they, he also uses, and this is something I've experienced the last few weeks, he can use it to take your eyes away from what is important, to distract you. Don't let the enemy do that. I was talking to Denise, who's had her own little trials with family this week, and I was saying that there's a scripture in Isaiah that says, no weapon formed, forged against you or something will prevail. So I looked up the definition of prevail, oops, which I don't have at the moment because I said no slides. But, ba <laughs> but basically prevail means don't to prevail, if we say it's going to prevail, something prevails, it actually says, well, that there has superior power and authority over this over here. So if no weapon form, formed against me shall prevail, it means that it will not have superior power or authority over what I know to be true. Don't let sickness prevail over your circumstances. Sickness and disease will prevail in our lives when we allow it to take our joy and peace. Sickness and disease will prevail in our lives when we believe it is more powerful or superior to the power of God. And sickness and disease will prevail in our lives when we doubt God can or wants to heal. So as a mum... Um, I have had my kids come to me and go, oh, I can't get oh my God, so neat. And I kiss the boo-boo. And my kids go, oh, and they run off. <laughs> wow, what powerful kiss, say. Hey. It's not about the kiss. It's about the fact that my children made a choice not to let the boo-boo prevail and keep them away from playing. Don't let the boo-boo win. Don't let the boo-boo win. Our sicknesses and diseases are like boo-boos in God's eyes. His healing is like a kiss from a mum on a boo-boo. Things may not change at first, but while we are waiting for the manifestation... Don't let the sickness and disease prevail. I am not in any way disputing or putting down the pain that you may be facing, the challenges that you're going through, the debilitating or life-threatening things that are happening to you. 
They are very real. But don't let the enemy prevail in that situation. Let God keep kissing that boo-boo and you keep saying thank you for the healing or whatever it is that you need to do to keep yourself strong so that you can you can prevail in God rather than the enemy prevailing over God. And the last little thing that I was going to talk about today from the church perspective was descendants of God. So the family of God. The family of God. I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, don't get me wrong, love my mum, love my dad, love my brothers, but my family was really dysfunctional. It I could tell you stories that might make your hair curl cool more than anything. But that was my family. But that wasn't God's best for my family. But I, we still loved each other. But that was my family. So I want you to know that regardless of what your family experience is, the family of God is different. It ain't perfect because it's filled with people who aren't perfect. But when you get a bunch of people that love God with all their heart, that focus on him, that want his will and his kingdom to come, you see what God's intention was for family. When God created everything, why did he call it a family? Why didn't he call it a club or an association or an incorporation or something or some other sort of group? Because he didn't want a bunch of people that just came together at that time And then went away. He wanted a bunch of people that come together to do this. But he also wanted a bunch of people that would care and look after people. But not only that, that would include him as dad in everything. That's why it's family. So, but as I prepared for today, I wanted to take that family of God thing from the mother, mother's point of view. And I found it really, really hard, believe it or not, to find scriptures that actually speak about the family of God from a mother's perspective. I found a lot of scriptures on the family group together, meeting together, gathering, etc. I found scriptures on the sibling, brothers, oh, he's our, Jesus is our brother and we're all brothers and sisters and all the rest of it. And I found scriptures on the father perspective. I didn't find very many, actually I couldn't find any at all. And I'm please, if anyone knows of any, let me know. That actually talk about the family of God from a mother's perspective. There are plenty of scriptures about mothers in mothers and the roles that they play and all the rest of it. But from the family of God perspective, I want to tell you, I couldn't find anything. And I don't think that that's horrendously bad. I just think that the role of a mother is at a different level to everything else. I think the role of a mother, I I heard it once said that the mother sets the tone of the house, sets the tone of the family. If the mother's a bit erratic, the family's a bit erratic. If the mother's, and I think that that perhaps is why I couldn't find any scriptures. I don't know why, that's just my opinion. So what I I want to do now is talk about a mother and the roles that she is and the perspectives that she has. A mother cares. 1 Thessalonians tells us that um, um, a mother cares, that she nurtures, that she feeds her children. So from the moment a mother gives birth, she cares for her child. She feeds and nurtures it. She puts her child's needs above her own. And that will generally continue for the rest of that child's life or mother's life, and dare I say, whichever comes first. Because while it's not a natural thing, unfortunately some mothers do have to farewell their, ch- farewell their children before they leave this earth. I pray that never happens to any of us, um, but yeah. A mother also imparts and teaches so many things. We have such an amazing role 
to play. And I'm not saying that dads don't teach or impart, but it's different. Because guess what? Dads and mums are different. They have different attributes. They have different giftings. They have different roles. So what a man can teach his children is totally different to what a woman can teach her children, even if they're teaching them the same lesson. Okay, so mothers teach unconditional love. No matter what we do or say, mum will always love us. And I know there are some mothers that have probably heard terrible things come out of their kids' mouths. But regardless, they still love their children. The, mother, the love of a mum is totally unconditional. You don't have to earn it. And she'll just give it. Mums, I want you to continue to give unconditional love to your children. But you need to go to the source to get that love. God showed me many years ago when I was praying for my kids. And he said, they're not yours. They're mine. All I want you to do is love them. Sometimes that's hard, especially with adult kids. Oh, it can be so hard. But we can do it, but we can't do it on our own. We can only do it if we draw on the source. And God is the source of all love. <clears throat> A mother teaches her children the meaning of devotion. And yes, I mean devoting to God. But we teach a child what it means to be devoted to something. I watched a movie last night. <laughs> Probably not the best movie to watch, but I liked the title. It was called Mother. I thought, oh, this will be all right. It's got Jennifer Lopez in it. It should be good, you know. Probably a bit of a rom-com or something. No. But can I tell you what I learned from that movie? It was a movie about Jennifer Lopez as a, like a bad person, spy person sort of thing. And she'd given birth to a child that she never saw. She had to give up parental rights to, to protect the baby. So she had to sign away her rights to that child to keep that baby safe. She was never allowed to see it, have any contact with it whatsoever. My God, how hard. But you know what it reminded me of? The two women from Solomon who both claimed a baby. And the one who said, who was the true mother, who said, no, no, no. You, you have the child. It's yours. Don't cut the child in half. That's what she did. She said, no, no, no. Protect my child. Then things turned out. Anyway, she did everything in her power and all her skills, all her tenacity, Everything she had to protect that child, but not only protect her, to equip her to take care of herself in the face of danger. And I just thought, wow, mums, that's what we do. We fiercely protect our kids. We can say, oh, yeah, that Brendan, I tell you what, it's a bit of a pain sometimes. Anyone else says that, I tell you what, I'll take your heads off. Because my Brendan is my pain, not yours. <laughs> so Tony and Carmel, don't call my son a pain. <laughs> Tony and Carmel's daughter is married to our son. Um, they protect us from everything, from germs, wash your hands, do this, to each other, breaking as, you know, stop them from fighting and feed them. So the siblings... Stop fighting, feet. Mothers will protect their children. Mothers teach us patience. Oh, my goodness. Think about it. How many times have our mums asked us to do something or told us not to do something? And, oh, sorry, I forgot. Yep, okay, yep, okay, okay. But not only that, a mother's life starts in patience. They have to wait nine months for us to arrive. 
the amount of times that you spend in doctor's surgeries or dentist surgeries, watching sports, the amount of times mums pretend to be asleep waiting for us to come home when we go out, who can't actually sleep until they hear that door close or they get that phone call saying, oh, mum, I'm not coming home, staying at Julie's tonight. That's the girl saying she's staying at Julie's tonight. Um, yeah, et cetera. So mums teach us patience. They are so patient. Mum teaches service. See, all the previous stuff I just said, plus the chats about life issues, when we've got broken hearts, when, you know, my best friend won't talk to me now, we've had a big fight, we sit down, mums sit down and talk to that. The meals they cooked, the clothes they've washed... The hair, the brush, the outings, the innings, and by that I mean it's raining outside but you have an outing inside. Holidays, sleepless nights, etc., etc. Mums teach us what service looks like. Mums also teach us how to be prepared. So do any of these sound familiar to us adults? Have you got your keys? Have you got your jumper, your lunch, your school bag, your hat? Etc. Oh, my my mum's big one. Have you got tissues? Take tissues. Make sure you got tissues. And when I was really little, have you got your hanky? Yes, I've got my hanky. I don't know what I need the hanky for because I do this. But yeah, I'll take the hanky. <laughs> and also, don't forget to brush your teeth, clean your room, wash your hands before dinner. But these days, wash your hands before anything. Don't forget to. Take the rubbish out. Don't forget to. All of these little prompts are shared by mums. And guess what? They prepare us to be prepared for life. They instill in us um, a preparedness, an ability to be able to think, well, what do I need and where do I get it from? They teach us honesty. Mums don't want excuses. They just want you to be true to your word. They know you're not perfect. They don't want you to explain away your misdeeds. They want you to own up to them. And guess what? They're going to support you through them all the way. Mums teach us that feelings do matter. Uh, in preparing for this, I read uh, in an article that said, Dads may wipe the tears from our cheeks, but mums are so much better at wiping the tears from our hearts. Mums, you can't wipe those tears from their hearts unless God is wiping the tears from your hearts too. Make sure you're going to him before you're doing it this way. I mean, dads do teach us so much. They do teach us when to suck it up and move on. Because there's a time for that. It can't always be about, oh, go, boo, 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 boo. Sometimes it's got to be, no, you're okay. Just get up and go. But mums teach us how to work through these, these emotions when it, really ma- when it matters. Mums also teach us that no matter what, we matter. Every time she shows us love, kindness, care, it is an act of showing how valuable we are. Do you know we cannot do that unless we know the value and the worth that we have in God? Mums, know who you are in God. Know who, what your identity is. Because you cannot let your kids know value and worth if you don't know that you are valued and you are worth. They also teach us we don't have to be perfect. Mums teach us that it is okay to make mistakes, to not be perfect. It's how we respond to those mistakes that matter. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to be us. But as our mums would say, be the best you you can be. And that's not a throwaway line because every person is different. And if you've got more than one child, mums, you know every child is different. Even though you're raising them the same way, they have their own gifts, their own talents, their own personalities, their own quirks. 
Let them be the best you they can be because guess what? That's what God wants you to be. So when you're filling up, when you're going to him and say, Lord, make me the best version of me I can be, you are then able to impart that into your children by living out being the best version of you that you can be. And mums teach us so much more. Heaps. Stuff that we can't even imagine until we become mums ourselves. So I just want to say to the mums, well done, good and faithful mums. Well done. Enjoy your day of rest because it's only today. (laughs) I also want to say that if you are part of the family of God and Lighthouse is your home church, I want you to know how blessed you are because God has placed you in part of the family of in part of the family that is abundantly blessed with so many amazing mums, both spiritual and natural. And as I prepared today, I felt God placed four of these amazing women on my heart to give a word of encouragement. So that's how I'm going to wrap up. So for I think three of them are here and one, I hope, is watching online. So Felisa... Can you please stand? I've known this woman for 20 odd years. The woman that you see here today is the same woman that I saw then. Steadfast. Actually, honestly, she hasn't changed physically. She, she really, she has not aged. Can I tell you, she looks exactly the same. But apart from that, she still passionately loved Jesus. She still serves the best way she knows how. She's just an amazing woman of God and so underestimated. But Felicia, this is what I want to say to you. My word of encouragement to you today is when I go into battle, I want to go with you. You are a strong, resilient, loving, caring woman and mother and abuela, and abuela. You have sown family into the kingdom. When your family left to go overseas, and you did not miss a beat. You may have grieved, you may have been sad, but you still kept on for God, passionately loving him, no matter what. I thank you for your gentleness, love, grace, and tenacity. And I believe the Lord is saying to you to continue to do what you do. Speak out what he shows you. Write down what he is telling you and share it with the rest of it if he allows you. Because you are an underestimated and underutilized weapon of God. God bless you. Okay, Bibby, can you stand please? I haven't known Bibby quite as long, but again, she has not aged at all. She she looks amazing. (laughs) This incredible woman, she's now a surfer. Can you believe it? I love it. Bibi, you are a special woman full of surprises. You may not think of yourself as a spiritual mother mother to those here, but God does. He shows you many things and he has more to share with you so you can share with others. When you speak some of the revelation that you have, when you get the opportunity to share about communion or whatever, blows my socks off. God speaks to you in a way that he doesn't speak to others. And you are able to, you are a real teacher. And I want to encourage you to step out in that more and more. And even cry out for the, for the opportunity to do so. Every time I talk with you, I leave inspired. Inspired to not be afraid to give things a go. Used worldwide pandemic hits and she starts a business. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Bibi does. 
Oh, I think I'll learn to surf. I've been talking about that for years, but she just goes and does it. You are an amazing um, example of someone who loves life, loves God, loves her family, and loves challenges, but lives through them. So thank you. Just keep being who you are. And as he speaks, listen, and yeah, keep stepping out as he gives you the opportunity. So thank you so much for being such an inspiration. Thank you. And where is Adriana? Adriana. Well, she's going to have to come to the front. Oh, I might do, because I know Shirley's not here, but hopefully Shirley's watching. But Shirley, you are another one. There she is, on the screen, next to Tony, on the right, in the middle. Shirley, oh my, what a strong and loving woman you are. Your smile heals, warms and calms all who see it. You are a significant woman in our family. As I write these words, I hear the phrase, the best is yet to come. Shirley, may not feel like it now, but honey, get ready. Because I believe God's got so much more for you to do. And we can't wait to see that happen. So God bless Shirley. Adriana, please stand. Okay. Adriana, you are such a beautiful hearted person. I've known you since you were, what, 15? And again, she hasn't aged. It's amazing what the Holy Spirit can do, isn't it? (laughs) Let me see. You are so gentle, loving, caring, and funny. And the gift of your voice and the heart of worship to God is just a sailor moment, or sila, I don't know how you pronounce that word, for me. Every time, I'm just like, this is it. The Lord wants you to know he sees it all. All that you do, say and cry, he sees it all. I feel like he wants to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep your eyes on him and his word, looking and listening for what he has for you. But also, don't be afraid to step out because he's got you. He wants you to not stand and say, okay, where do I put my foot? It's a bit like that whole Indiana thing. Step of faith. Put it and he's going to meet you there. Don't be afraid. Don't hold back. Just keep your eyes on him. And thank you for being the beautiful, caring, wonderful woman that you are. We are so blessed to have you. God bless you. And that's sort of it for me. I just want to say it's a real privilege to be able to share the word. And I just want to say to all the mums out there, happy Mother's Day. You are an amazing woman. You are all amazing women, sorry. And you are doing a fantastic job. You should be very, very proud. God bless. Thanks, Kerry. Very good. Kerry put a lot of time into that, as you can tell. It, uh, <laughs> she's, whether she's got through her notes or not, it's the time you spend with our Lord. It's, it's a matter. You, you, you might spend, spend a couple of days and you, you don't even get anything, but the couple of days you've spent with him, you've got, you would have got plenty. Uh, wasn't it great having the, um, the kids talking about their mother? They're all, all good words. I, the one that stood out to me with Ava, she said that you don't eat the, the bread of idleness. And um, I don't know mother, any mother that eat, a, eat the bread of idleness. Mother, I don't know a mother that's ever relaxing. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether you, didn't need, whether you need to tell mothers that. Maybe you have to tell fathers that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. 
But um, yeah, I have never seen an idle mother. Oh, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the mothers. Thank you for that they have a, uh, just a great day here today, Lord, and uh, whatever they're going to do this afternoon and for the rest of their lives, we just pray that, they, um, that you just reward them and bless them in what they do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord.